Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the Zimdeek channel. Today, it's another adventure in cartooning. We're going to learn how to cartoon SpongeBob. <laughs> Won't that be fun? Hang on. And don't forget our rules of cartooning. All you need is paper and pencil and a good eraser. Make sure you draw a light because we're going to be using that eraser. And most importantly, don't get frustrated. Here we go. Okay, everybody. Today we're going to be drawing SpongeBob SquarePants. The thing to remember about SpongeBob is that he is a cartoon character that doesn't make a lot of sense. He's just there to be fun and funny and silly, and that's what we're going to have. We're going to have some fun. All right? We're going to start with the top of his head with a line. It doesn't have to be a perfect line. It's not going to stay there for very long. And remember, we are going to be erasing a lot of this. Next, we're going to use the side of his body. We're going to use a curved line that's going to come down. Uh, the thing with cartoons and cartooning, curved lines are going to show dimension. We're going to get back up here in this corner. We're going to draw a line down and over. That's the side of his body. We're going to follow that line all the way down as much as possible. Not everything that you draw is going to be 100%. Sometimes you might have to draw it again. So this other side, we're going to draw a line that's going to curve just a little bit and down. That's to kind of push the body forward. On the side of his body here, we're going to draw a little line down just to show some dimension. Then a line across to show the bottom part of his body. And boom, you have what looks like a bent cereal box. But it's actually SpongeBob. If you think about it, here's the front of his face. The side of his face is over here. Or the side, yeah, the side of his head is over here. If you think about where halfway on his face is, if you think it's right about there, uh, actually, it needs to be over just a little bit. Think about it. It's going to be right about there. That's where the first eye is going to start. And that's a circle. As round as you can get it. Instead of drawing the next eye right next to it and having to erase that, we're going to draw his nose next. And his nose looks like what? Is it a Pinocchio nose? A, a beak nose? No, it looks like a hot dog. There's a slight twist up on it. The next eye is right next to the, the first one, and it goes right behind his nose. So we don't even have to draw the whole thing. Just draw it right up to there. His eyeballs are, of course, circles with dots in them circle with a dot in it. Well, you see how lousy that circle turned out. Let's try that again. Circle and a dot. See, I'm doing this digitally, so it's easy just to hit a couple keys. But don't be afraid to use that eraser. That's what it's there for. Up above, SpongeBob's eyes, he's got those eyelashes. That's one of those little trademark icon parts about sponge. Sometimes it goes out of his head. I'm going to poke that one out just a little bit. Three eyelashes up above his eyes. Yep. Don't want to have a coincidence line. You want to try to stay away from there, which means I'm going to take those eyelashes and extend them out just a little. Just to get them above where his head's at. Alright, next is his top lip. And his top lip starts halfway up his nose, and it's a line down and out. And it's going to curl up for a smile. That can go right into his cheek. Now you're wondering, why am I drawing SpongeBob's head before I draw the whole rest of his body? Well, drawing his head, I've found, comes in real handy when you're positioning the rest of his body. That's why I did that. On his smile, you're going to finish that smile off. You're going to draw on a cheek now, and the cheek's like an upside-down U. And you can go through and erase the bottom part of his eye that that cheek is in front of. Now another all-important SpongeBob detail are those three freckles on his cheek. And why is that? That actually... Let me switch to a red here so that I can draw that point home. That actually gives him kind of a frowny face right there on his cheek. Don't ask me why. It's just the way uh, just the way he is drawn. Now we're going to go in and draw on his teeth. I like to place that first teeth right, right between his eyes, right up into his top lip right there. And of course we're dealing with squares. There's squares on them as much as possible. There's two teeth there. We're going to open up his mouth a little bit. Bring that right underneath the first tooth. And of course, since there's an open mouth, there's going to need to be a tongue. Now, 
boom, we have his face. Easy enough, right? Now we're going to go and draw in the rest of Sponge, the rest of his body. And the way we're going to do that, all important, another SpongeBob detail is that bottom lip right there. Right below that, we're going to draw a wavy line that represents the, the separation between his head and the rest of his body. Just a, not too wavy of a line, but a good wavy line. Right above that, right about where that bottom lip, somewhere between the bottom lip and the bottom of his eye, he's going to have an arm that sticks out. And it goes out to a circle. Now remember, I did a video on hands. And if you go right across from there, we're going to go up that way also, also to a circle. Right below that, right about on both sides of where his teeth are, we're going to be drawing those legs. Those legs are skinny and long. And believe it or not, they end in squares, especially if you don't want to show a whole lot of dimension to those shoes start with a square all right now we're gonna have his hands in the air like he's looking surprised and he's got his hands up hopefully you're not hearing that furnace a whole lot I'm gonna start with the thumb thumbs are gonna be pointed up both sides now his hands are gonna be or his fingers are gonna be wide open so he's and he's got three fingers two and three they're just loops just curved lines out and back in out and back in out and back in and of course if it doesn't look right you can always go through and erase what doesn't look right to you let's see that fingers a little short let's extend that finger out just a little bit not a lot boom now that uh, circle Again, represents the palm of the hand. We're going to throw in a little palm line there and another little palm line here. And now we can go through and erase. I'm going to increase my pen size so it'll be easier. We can erase where the hand hits the wrist, where the, fit, where the thumb hits the palm, and where the fingers hit that circle. And you don't even have to erase that whole circle if you don't want. You can leave a little bit of it right there to represent uh, his palm. I'm going to circle out or curve out his fingers a little bit and go through and erase a little bit here. After that, we have the separation between his head and the rest of his body. Let's draw in his shorts. His shorts are very easy. You're going to leave the bottom line of his sponginess just to drive home the point that it's spongy. The shorts are lying down, curved, lying around the leg to show some dimension. Line right back up underneath, down, same length, curve line, right back up. And now, because we're going to leave that bottom line, really, for all we have to do is erase the part of his leg that is inside of his shorts. Underneath his bottom lip, right there, he's got a collar. And his collar looks almost like a stretched out W or two V's, depending upon how close you want to, you want to uh, make them. Sponge has changed in looks over the years from first season to he's been on for 22 seasons. So they've had plenty of time to uh, uh, evolve that character. Now we're going to draw his tie. His tie is in two parts. The top, the knotted part of the tie, has a line right on the side of that collar that comes down and in. Another line comes down and in with a line straight across to connect them. That's the top part of the tie. Bottom part of the tie starts at that corner. It's going to come down a little bit. The other side is going to come down a little bit. And it's going to be connected with a V. He's got uh, his shirt. There's a separation between his shirt and his pants. And that's a straight line. You're going to want to follow that line. Right here, this bottom line, you're going to want to follow that. About halfway between the his head wavy spongy line and that bottom line here straight back and then again you're gonna go straight across and under the tie that's separation between his shirt and his pants and he has a belt that is made up of rectangles there's one here on the side then there's one here on this side straight across as straight as you can get it the next rectangle goes under his tie, just barely. You're not going to see that belt buckle because the tie is in the way. 
It's going to poke out on the other side of where the tie is. Right there. And one more little one right here. I made that square a little too wide. So I'm going to go through and shorten it up just a hair before I go in and I add that next one because that next one needs to fit just like that look at that pardon me now here's his shirt here there's his pants we've got his shorts in we need to show a little bit of shadow to show that those pants or that his legs are tucked in underneath his square sponginess. Here's his shirt, like I said, and his arms are way up here. And he has sleeves. And the way you're going to show that sleeve is a sideways U all the way around. Now this arm is on his this side of his body, so you're going to see the entire sleeve. And it's going to wrap around. And you can take it this way if you like, wrap it all the way around the side here, and then draw the front of it in just a curve. And then we're going to go through and erase everything that's behind that sleeve because the sleeve's out in front. It's not a see-through see -through sleeve. There we go, just like that. Now on the other side of his body, you're not going to see this whole area here. You're just going to see from the side of his body out. So you're going to see just a little bit of sleeve popping out here. Curve line again around that arm in order to show some dimension right back in. And you're going to go through and erase the arm that's in the way. We're still going to keep this side here. And of course I need to touch up that other hand here. I didn't mean to neglect it. Right there, attached where the thumb attaches to the palm, where the fingers attached to the palm. Just like so. Okay. He's got a shirt. Then we can tighten, whoops, so we can tighten that up just a little bit better. Right there. Of course, I would tighten it up anyway if I were to go through and ink it and even add a little shadow line right there. Just to drive that point home that that sleeve is sitting right right in his side. Now we've come to the legs and the socks and the shoes. The thing about this crazy shoes, if you're going to show them to one dimensionally, which they've I've seen them do a lot, that shoe is a square. It's the back part of that shoe. Front part of the shoe looks like a light bulb that's laying down. Curls out, comes right back in. Comes out, curls out comes right back in. That's a little goofy looking. I'm going to draw it again. Comes out, curls around, comes right back in. Still not quite there yet. Sometimes it takes a few times. You can't get frustrated with it. That's part of the fun of learning how to do all this. That's going to do. You see that square right there? It needs to be there. That represents the front part of a shoe. And then you connect that to the back part of a shoe. I'm going to expand my point out so I can get that done quicker. Right there, you're going to leave a little circle there for a shine because he's always got shiny shoes for some reason, even though he lives, of course, in a pineapple under the sea. Good thing he still has shiny shoes. Leave that little reflection in. Fill in the rest. Okay, now for his socks. His socks are just a simple three lines that are curved right there along the leg. That's to show the leg has some dimensions and he has socks on. Now, what are we forgetting? Well, of course, we're forgetting his holes. He's got holes because he's a sponge. I'm not sure if the holes stay constant every season. Pretty sure it changes from time to time. Usually any wide open space gets a hole or a smaller hole. Don't go too small or they're going to look like bubbles or pimples. You want to make them big enough so that they look spongy. That's to help him look spongy. He's got a big one right there and a small one underneath that. Okay. And oh, we can even throw one here, but I doubt he's even got that, does he? Yeah, he does now. There we are. 
Now we can go through and emphasize our lines. If we need to, we can add a little bit of shadow to show that that leg is tucked into the shorts. Now along his head, his head is sponge. So we can spongy that all up if we want to curl it, curve it out, even go through with a little thicker uh, point, more emphasized lines, and just wavy that up. Like I said before, it really didn't have to be perfect. It just had to be there. And then you can always go through and add your detail. That's why first rule of cartooning is always to draw light. Now, second rule. First rule is to bring a pencil, paper, and a decent eraser. There we go. I think we have SpongeBob SquarePants. Sponge Bob S Q U A R E P A N T S. Now make sure that you date your paper. It's very it's very important that you do that, especially for developing artists to know when they drew what when. You'd go through and do whatever little touch-ups that you want to do, add whatever little features now you might want him to do or say or or anything. I'm gonna go and fill in the back of his mouth. All sorts of different things that you can do. Throw his. Uh, crusty crab hat on him if you want. Do whatever you need. That, my friends, is SpongeBob SquarePants. The more you do, the better you get. I can't emphasize that enough. And soon you'll be able to take that and just draw it right out and move the uh, features however you need. And just have some fun with it, you know. You can swing that arm around. You know, all of a sudden, you've got Sponge doing whatever you need. Not difficult to do. Just don't try to overthink it. And play with it. Don't be afraid to get a sketch pad. Don't be afraid to take your... Um, tablet out with you wherever you go and just sit there and sketch and sketch the more you do the better you get because your hand-eye coordination is always going to improve as you go along the real key is are those rules that we uh, mentioned in front pencil and paper is really all you need and a really good eraser you may make sure you draw light so that you can erase it easier so it doesn't add to your frustration now, if it doesn't look 100%, don't be afraid to erase it. You're always going to make mistakes. That's why we have pencils before we do inks. It's so we can get that down in our head, and then we can go back over now and ink this. And that's really all it takes to do SpongeBob. Hope you had fun. Hope you uh, gave it a try. Remember, don't get frustrated. Uh, if there's a character in the future you want to see me break down, do leave that in the comments section. Leave a comment anyway. Let me know how I did. I'm still getting used to doing all of this, so your input is always welcome. Hit that like button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications because I'm going to be dropping videos as often as I can. I can't do it absolutely every day, but I am going to try to do them a lot more often. All right? Until next time, take care. And thanks a lot for being here.